So welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old ways, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. and do a 4th of July meal and we're gonna do it a little early so maybe you might want to try it for the 4th but it would be a good meal anytime we have got a new pit boss pellet smoker and I have used it about I don't know five or six times and I really like it it's very efficient I just cleaned it for the first time underneath here there's a, you go in, take the grates out, and go up, there's a piece of metal plate in here. And you go up under there, and like I say, I've used it five or six times, and it had about maybe a half a cup of ashes in there. And I have almost used this bag right here of pellets. It's a 20-pound bag. I've used that many pellets, and it's only, like I say, very little ash in there. Very simple to clean. Took me five minutes to clean it clean it out. Uh, one thing I do like about this thing is it's almost mouse proof. If you, if you got it outside like we do and live here in the woods, we have trouble with mice wanting to get in our grills and I don't like that at all. Always clean and sanitize my grills before I use them. This one right here has one place, one hole, and it's down here in the drain, the drain area. And a mouse would have a hard time getting in there. What I normally do is just shove a piece of steel wool or a piece of just anything in there just to make sure they don't get in there. <clears throat> so it has a hopper on it. It's self-feeding. Self it does have to have electricity to work, but it is, it's self-feeding. It's got an auger that feeds from this box in there. And you can cook up to 400, I believe it's 400 and well, high is around 500 degrees, and it will cook. I have charred some pork steaks. I have charred, cooked, and charred some beef steaks, and they've been good, ain't they, girl? They've been good. I made a, a meal Saturday. Uh, Miss Lori run off to the river with the grandkids, and I had me some pork steaks, and I smoked me some fresh potatoes out of the ground in here, and they were really good. This here is <clears throat> the hopper. <clears throat> I don't know what it holds. I don't ever fill it all the way up because humidity is so high around here. I don't keep a lot in there because of moisture. I don't know how much it even draw moisture, but I don't want it to have to. Uh, we keep it under the shed, just to keep it out of the rain. <clears throat> and I actually put me some cardboard on top of this when I shut the lid when I'm done with it. This is a master blend pellet, our competition blend. It's maple, maple. <laughs> it's maple, hickory, and cherry. It's a blend, and it's really been good. You know, and we've got different ones we're going to try. But you just pour this in this hopper. How much how much do you know to pour in there well you can fill it full if you want to just but see it's easy to check you ain't got to worry about it you can fill it up like i say this is the first 20 pound bag we've gone through 
And I don't tell them how many bags of regular charcoal we'd have went through and how many ashes we would have had. And so this is going to, of course, them ribs are going to be on four or five hours, so. Right, and if I need more, I'll put more in there. It won't be no problem. Okay. Won't be no problem to put add more to it. There have been people ask, having trouble getting their grills to light. Now, I, I, I may have trouble today, but I haven't been having no trouble. What you do, you turn it on. It's plugged in. You turn it on. You got a blue light there. It tells you that it's on. It's got temperature selection, but the first click on mine is smoke. And what I'm going to do before, because it was getting low on pellets, I'm going to purge it one time. You don't have to do that every time. I'm going to purge it one time. Prime it? Yeah, prime, purge. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that after I kick it on. I don't think it's going to do it until I kick it on. I'm going to put it on smoke, and I'm going to prime it one time. And it takes about three or four minutes. Right now that auger's feeding it. All there is in this grill is a cup about this big. Maybe not that big. And it flat cooks and puts out some heat. And don't make makes very little ash. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. As long as the electronics hold up and last, it, they're not cheap. But... You can put it on there and walk away from it, check it once in a while just to make sure your temperature's staying up there and everything's working right. We found this one on sale at, at a tractor, well, farm store. Farm supply store, it was like $50 off that day or something like that. Maybe it might have been $100 off. But it was what? How much was it with $50 off? I think it was around $350. It might have been $400, but I think it's $350. I think so. And they've got them even bigger than this one. A lot bigger. This, this one here will cook. I mean, you could put one, two, it, three, four, five. I, I say you could put six chickens in there if you wanted to. We're going to cook some baby back ribs mm -hmm. and some corn. We're going to smoke a little bit of corn. But them ribs are probably going to take, we're going to cook them on... Uh, Around 225 degrees, probably gonna take around four hours, maybe more. We'll just have to check them and see. And I guess we're gonna dry rub them. I hadn't thought we're gonna dry rub them. And this thing should start smoking here before too long. I can feel that auger putting that, put the pellets in there. So it takes about three to five minutes after it starts smoking before it'll start smoking, then your pellets start setting on fire, and then it'll kick on and it'll start burning and your temperature will start rising. It's 200 degrees in there right now. It don't take very long. And you can see why. You see that flame out in there? That's, that's where I char my steaks and stuff, right there over top of that. But for cooking ribs, we're gonna keep that shut. Now all I'm gonna do is turn this knob up to 200, which is the first day temperature. I'm gonna try it at 250, or 225, I'm sorry, 225. And it'll probably rise up to 250, 275, and back down to 200 and back, back and forth. Should keep it above uh, 200, we'll see. If it don't, I may bump it up one more notch, which is 250. To let her get good and warm, I'm gonna let her sit right there for now. Then I may knock her back down to 225. It just depends on what it's gonna do and how it's gonna cook, how much heat it's gonna throw in her. This is kind of new to me, and I'm still learning on it. But so far, I really like it. We've got to make some dry rub to put on these ribs. Miss Lori's gonna make some dry rub. And we've cut the silver skin, the outside skin on the inside of the ribs, we've cut the silver skin off. 
And also we cut it in half and that just makes it easier to handle too when you're grilling. Now we're just doing one baby back rib, but y'all may be doing three or four. So anyways, I'm going to be making this dry rub up and uh, you may have to double the recipe, but we'll see how far it goes on this just one baby back rib. And I've got a fourth of a cup of brown, light brown sugar. Let's see, I need a tablespoon of smoked paprika. And uh, if you don't have smoked paprika, but you've got just the Spanish paprika or what they call the sweet, you know, whichever, just use whatever paprika you got. This is a tablespoon of smoked. Let's see, we need a tablespoon of salt. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of cumin. Of course. Of course. We're going to put a teaspoon of onion powder, and this is your, your rub, and you can make this up and put it in a little jar or something, if because it may last some of y'all a good while. And like I said, you can double and triple this recipe, put it in a, this will be one of my dry mixes that we do every so often, and this will be kept in the pantry. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of chili powder. What have I not put in there? Did I put garlic powder? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> a taste, I couldn't forget garlic. A teaspoon of garlic powder. I think that's everything. Now, I'm, I'm not personally going to put black pepper in here. You can because I'm putting that smoked paprika and chili powder. So anyways, that's our, our dry rub for... The ribs and we're just going to mix that up good and i'm gonna let whoops i'm gonna let mr brown i've washed my hands his hands i'm are, fixing to get in it <laughs> his hands are clean we got to get these ribs in that smoker so just mix it up really good and i'll let you have it now well how much i'm going to use probably most of this i'm sure i'm going to sprinkle it on there to start with And then I'm gonna massage it in. I'm gonna rub her in. We like the dry rub better than. Uh, I'm not saying that barbecue sauce is bad, nothing like that. But we just we just like the dry rub and then and then smoking it, and then every hour or so he'll go out and he'll spray it down with a little bit of apple juice. And at the end. We always bring out the barbecue sauce. And if you want barbecue sauce, don't you put it on there. It's just an optional. And you can use apple cider vinegar instead of apple juice. Some people do that, but I prefer to use apple juice. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use most of this stuff. I'm gonna stick my hand in it. There's not a whole lot of need of putting up on the very back you can put it on there but i like to get the end of the, the end of the ribs where the ribs have been cut for sure i like to get the very end of them where that tender meat is and like i said you don't have to cut your ribs in half it just makes it easier to handle on the uh on the smoker or the grill and uh i think it even might help it cook just a little bit faster too it sure smells good it does smell good and she's about ready to go out there i used about all that of course i you know i'm putting it on pretty thick well it, it really does you know take quite a bit so that's why i said you may have to double or triple it and i like doing the ends and the ends of the rib Make sure you get it all covered. And then we'll spray it just a little bit right now with a little bit of the apple juice before we put it on the grill. Well, that so looks good, don't it? It does. It smells really good. So we're going to take this out to the grill, the pellet grill, and get it on there and let it start cooking. So I set this on 250 degrees. Right now, it looks like it's holding between 200 and 250, around 225. I will say it may go up 
at times to 275 and back down to 225, but that's where we're going to keep it at. See how it goes for a while. She just went through a smoke cycle. I've seen it smoking. I can smell like a choo choo train. Now, I'm not going to set these right on top of that right this minute. This here center is the, 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 the hottest spot. Until these get smoking, I might set some on there later. I'm just going to kind of keep them off to the side of it right now. It probably wouldn't hurt to put it on there, but I, I'm just going to wait and see what it is. This is kind of all new to me. I've never cooked ribs on here before. so We've been cooking steaks and and beef and pork and hamburgers. And I've cooked some potatoes. Now I'm gonna spray just a little bit of this apple juice on top of there right now, keep it moist. And we're gonna shut the lid and let her cook for about an hour. Okay, for the corn on the cob, we're going to make just a, a little bit of, uh, there's probably about three-fourths of a stick of butter here. So, pretty much the recipe is going to depend on how many, how much corn that y'all cooked. We done three corn on the cob, so I've done about three-fourths of a stick. And we're going to put a teaspoon of minced garlic and I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to put a good tablespoon of Parmesan and I'm just going to stir that up. Now I think I'm going to put a little bit of sea salt here. So I'm going to put a little bit of salt in it so I like a little bit of salt on my corn and that's it. That's going to be our our seasoned butter for our corn on the cob when it gets done. It all looks good. I'm going to put a little bit of this melted butter and garlic and Parmesan on your corn. Is that okay? You know that's okay. <laughs> it all looks good. You got a good char on this char on this corn. Cooked it for, I don't know, somewhere around 20 minutes. I turned up the temperature to about, uh, I turned it up to 350 and it hovered around 300. Uh, and then right there at the last, I opened up where I can char and I charred it on each side for about 30 seconds. It smells so good. And it looks good. Mm -hmm. These ribs smell wonderful. Yeah, they do. Absolutely wonderful. The good Lord's blessed us with another wonderful meal. Another wonderful meal. I'm going to put some, some more of that garlic on, them, on that corn. Man. Now, this is going to be a first time. I'm fixing to bite into a piece of corn. Everybody's going to be watching me. <laughs> first time. <laughs> first time on YouTube, on TV, whatever. Oh. Because they're, most people know I've got dentures. Are you going to taste one? Are you going to taste... <laughs> That's good stuff and it squirted right up my nose. Man, that's good corn. Well, get the plate over here where I can taste it. I know it's going to go everywhere. If I don't that Parmesan it. and that garlic just really brings it over top. I'm going to get me a little rib right here. This, these ribs are really good. The thing about, they'll tell you about a good smoked rib, you don't want it falling off the bone. You want it to stay on the bone. But when you bite into it, you want it to be tender. Like these are. And it's got a good smoke ring around the top and around the bottom. 
Not too bad for the first time cooking ribs on there, huh? Mm mm. Those are so good. That rub is really good too. I'll just taste the one you did for right now. <laughs> People be talking about us eating after each other. Oh well. We've only done it for 43 years. You've done a good job. Man, them. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Guys, y'all need to try Mr. Brown's recipe. It's really good. And I hope, um, you know, there was a couple of people that wanted to know about the pellet grill, and he really likes it. Now, we do have several different smokers. We have a gas one. We have a huge smoker that my family down in Texas built for us. It's a huge one, and we just absolutely love that. But it's just not something you go out there and use every day. So my son got a pellet grill just like this. My youngest both, son. Uh, both of them, my older son got one. That's true. And they just bragged and bragged on it. So I bought him one, and uh, so far everything he's cooked on has been really good. That's good. It is. So I hope y'all like these recipes, and I hope y'all try them. One of my favorite foods. I know. The corn is delicious. That, that garlic and Parmesan, that melted butter, and that sea salt. Yumminess. Anyways, this is just part of our, our 4th of July recipes here. And, Mr. Brown, you've done a good job. Thank you very much, there, dear. <laughs> so I'm up next. I'm going to be making a dessert and another side. So I hope y'all stay with us because... Uh, we got more coming. Eat up. That corn's wonderful. <laughs> that turn okay, we are going to do another side dish. And really and truly, you can use this as a side dish, or you can use this as maybe an appetizer. But what we're going to make is we're fixing to make some cow cowboy caviar. And this is some del <laughs> delicious stuff, y'all. It's easy to put together. You can serve it either cold or you can serve it at room temperature. And that's the good thing about it because if you need to take it to a 4th of July picnic or something like that, <clears throat> it'll be good. So, we're going to start out with a 15 ounce can of black eyed peas. Now, my beans, what you want to do is you want to dump them and strain them and rinse them really good. And then let them dry a while. You don't want to really... Uh, make this with a bunch of wet beans or anything. So that's a 15 ounce can of black eyed peas. And I've got a 15 ounce pan, uh, can of uh, black beans. And I'm gonna use shoe peg corn, but you can use any corn that you have. You can use fresh corn too. So we got our black beans, we got our corn, and we got our black eyed peas. And we're going to put, I chopped up a small purple onion, and I've got a half a cup of uh, chopped up red bell pepper, and I've got a half a cup of chopped up yellow bell pepper. So we're just going to put this in there. This is really good for something, you know, that you try to think of something different sometimes to to take to 4th of July or different holidays and you can serve this anytime it's just a really good thing it's very colorful too and we're going to put in a small can of uh, chopped up green chilies now in place of that you can put some jalapenos if you like stuff really spicy you can do that I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a cup of sugar. I'm going to put in a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. And a teaspoon of chili powder. And I need to grab my cumin. 
we're going to put about half a teaspoon of cumin. We're going to put a third of a cup of white wine vinegar. And this is your dressing for your, your salad. And then we've got a half a cup of olive oil. Now to this too, you can add some cilantro. Mr. Brown does not like cilantro, so I'm not going to add it to it. There's not very many things that Mr. Brown don't like, but cilantro is one of them. And I'm going to put a tablespoon of lime juice. And that's all there is to this. And we're just going to mix it up. Now there are a few other additions that you could put to it. You could put you some black olives. Like I said, some jalapenos. Just anything like that. And putting the sugar in there... <clears throat> What this is going to give you is it's going to give you a sweet but a uh, little bit of snap to it with that chili powder and cumin and stuff. And of course the longer that it sits the better it's going to be. And you see how pretty it is. But them green chilies and bell peppers. And it's just a really good thing that you can serve it at room temperature and it'll be okay so what i do is serve this with chips you can uh, serve it with pita chips or anything like that but that's how fast and easy that was and we're going to taste it such pretty pretty colors Okay, guys, we're going to taste of our cowboy caviar. And what I've got here is I've got, um, this is Simply Organic. It's a, a blue corn tortilla chip, and these are really good. And they also make this in red, too. So that's a really good thing to have for the 4th of July is maybe some blue corn tortilla chips and some red ones and just even your uh, regular tortilla chips. So let's taste it. I know it's going to be good, but I'm going to taste it anyways. Stuff like this is just some of my favorite things to eat. In fact, I told my daughter one day, I said, you know, for some reason, I just really love finger foods at parties and stuff. And I love the side dishes and all the dips and stuff. So, let's taste it. Everything in there, it just kind of marries together and tastes so good. I'm telling y'all, y'all really going to like this. It's an easy thing to put together. It tastes wonderful. It's, it'll be a good thing to take for hot weather. And everybody's going to love it too. It's a good thing. So y'all try it. It's good. So you know what? Next time we're going to do is we're going to make dessert. And um, I had a lot of things in mind. But I just want to go back to the, to the old times. I want to go back to what we would have had at Grandma's for 4th of July. And that would be a berry pie or berry cobbler with ice cream. So... We're going to make a triple berry pie. It's going to be easy. Of course, you know, that's what I always say. But it is. It's an easy pie, and it's just so good. And it's just another one of Grandma's recipes. started with our triple berry cobbler. Now, you can, if you've only got one kind of berry, like blackberries or blueberries or raspberries, you can just make a, you know, you can make any kind of berry pie. But a triple berry pie is just that much, uh, to me, it's just all the different berries together. Just kind of, they go together and they just taste really good. And since I've got so many of each, I just thought I'd go ahead and make a triple berry. I've got some tame blackberries right here. And they're pretty good size. Uh, they don't have a lot of seeds on them, so I'm not worried about the seeds. 
I've got some blueberries. See, I've got about two cups of blackberries, probably almost two cups of blueberries, and about a cup and a half of raspberries. And I'm just going to put these in my pot. And they've been sitting here long enough that their juices have kind of been, they've been doing their thing. And I've got my heat on about medium low. Put my raspberries in there. Y'all, my raspberry bush has done so good this year. I'm going to put a half a cup of water. I'm going to put a cup of sugar. I'm going to put just a teaspoon of lemon juice. And I'm going to put about a tablespoon of butter. And that's all I'm going to do. And that's going to be my filling right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this cook down. And uh, when it starts to simmer, I'll turn it down and just let it simmer. Uh, probably about 15 minutes or so. And let it do its thing. And while it's doing that, we'll make our crust. Okay, we gotta back this truck up just a little bit. <laughs> Miss Lori forgot her flour. One of the most important things in my filling here. And I got a fourth a cup of flour. Cannot forget that. Now, I know everybody has their favorite pie crust recipe. This is just the one I use mainly, well, most of the time, really, to tell you the truth. Uh, but I'm using all butter today. A lot of times I'll use uh, about three-fourths lard and a fourth of, uh, of butter. But today it's going to be all butter for this cobbler. So what i got in my bowl is two cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to put teaspoon of salt and a tablespoon of sugar and I've got a whole stick of butter that I shredded up in there it was a uh, good cold butter and all I'm gonna do is work all this in together and like I said everybody's got their own recipe how they do things I tend to do things the easiest way that I grew up learning. No nonsense, no trouble. You know, when you were feeding a house full of people, you didn't have all day really to spend on uh, things. So you just had to get in there and you had to do the best you could do and make things work and make things stretch and get it out. And some of the most basic recipes are my favorite. So that's worked in pretty good. Now I've got some really cold water over here and I'm just going to put a little bit at a time. Some days it may take four tablespoons, some days it may not. You just, you never know what it's going to take. And I just kind of work it together till I feel it coming together. Sometimes I'll take my time when I've got it and I'll make the pie crust that you use uh, a little bit of vinegar in. It just makes no difference to me. I know I'm a pie crust gal. When I make I mean, that's my favorite, one of the favorite parts of the pie for me, really, is the crust. And I like a lot of crust. The thing about pie crust is you don't really want to overwork it. And I could do this in a food processor, but uh, all my young married life, I never had a food processor. And uh, this is just the way that we done it. You know, we got a, a saying there in the school cafeteria, and we say it all the time. And somebody come in, they'll say, well, they'll say, what's for lunch? And you tell them, they'll say, well, is it any good? And they'll say, well, yeah, we made it with love. 
with lots of love. So, really and truly, that's really the truth. Take your time. Enjoy what you're doing. Don't make it a hassle. So I ended up tonight putting a good five tablespoons, if not six, of cold water. And I'm just going to work all this flour in here. I'm just going to dump it out on my, my board. Don't never be intimidated by making pie crust. It's one of the first things I think I learned even before I really was learning how to make bread was to master pie crust. My grandmother could whip some pie crust up pretty quick. Don't put too much flour on it. I'm going to get my rolling pin. My berry filling is starting to do its thing. It's starting to thicken up, so I'm going to turn it down. I'm going to let it simmer for just a little bit. It's starting to thicken up already. And when I do a cobbler, there's different ways you can do a cobbler. You can roll your crust out in a rectangle or, or whatever it is that would fit, that's going to fit in your baking dish. Whether if it's an iron skillet, some kind of a glass baking dish, it doesn't matter. You can do like we always done in the cafeteria there at school. We rolled out our crust. And we usually left the crust kind of thick. We didn't roll it out real thin. And then we cut strips. And we strip it is what we would call it. We strip that cobbler. Or you can do the patchwork. Which is pretty much just squares. And I'm kind of thinking uh, I might do that because I like the look of it. You can do it with um, a pizza cutter. I'm trying to find the knife that I'm wanting to use. Use a knife. I'm putting me a little flour on my knife. I'm just going to cut them off. I'll probably use that. And then don't have to be perfect squares. Life is not perfect. Though I have to confess, I think pie and cobblers, <laughs> one of the most perfect things, desserts. I'm pretty partial to pies and cobblers. I like cake, too. And like I said, your squares don't have to be all the same size. Kind of cut them out like that. And any sides that you're cutting off, you can kind of stuff down the side of your cobbler. So, there's my squares. Now I'm going to get my baking dish over here. My berry pie filling has cooked down really good. You can see how thick it's gotten. It didn't take but about 15 minutes. Looking really good. It's just the right consistency where I like it. Now what I like to do too is I like to taste it. Taste that juice in there. Make sure that it's sweet enough. And I can tell you that cup with all these berries was plenty. 
it's sweet enough, but it still has a little bit of tart bite to it, and that's what Mr. Brown likes, especially with ice cream. So, we got that done. I've got my baking dish right here, and I kind of just, uh, it's not necessary, but I like to take a little butter and just kind of go around the bottom and the sides. And I'm going to put my pie filling in here, and I've got my oven. In fact, I'm baking it outside in the outdoor kitchen in that oven. I've got it on 350. It's already looking good. Get y'all down here maybe where I can see it better. We're going to go over this way just a little bit. Pull our pie over. And we're just going to start taking our pie crust. And I'm just going to kind of overlap it. None of it's going to make any rhyme or reason. It's called patchwork crust. And I'm just going to lay it on top. Now, y'all seen that I already had butter that I put in my pie filling. Um, before you put the crust on, if you want to, you could have dolloped more butter on it. A lot of times I do that. This is going to be so good. Now, I'm not going to have homemade ice cream. That is coming sometime, though. Uh, but I tell you, I'm going to have just about as good, and that's Bluebell Vanilla Ice Cream. Mr. Brown loves Bluebell. He just won't, he won't eat hardly anything else. You tell him you ain't got Bluebell, he'll just say, well, I don't think I want any ice cream. <laughs> that's the truth. That is the truth. Bluebell all the way. So I've got enough pie crust. I can just keep overlapping. Making this quilted crust, as we would call it. And when it cooks up, it looks, it just looks, just gives it a different look. I mean, you know, so I'll put that one in the corner. And then I've even got this odd piece. I think I'm going to overlap it over here in this corner because you can never have too much pie crust and right there in that corner. Let's put some right there. I got me a little bit of egg wash here. This is not necessary, it's optional, but I'm just going to kind of brush the tops. Just a little there. And then I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of sugar. That kind of gives it a pretty shiny top to it on the crust. My mother-in-law always sprinkles sugar on top of her pie crust. Okay, this is going to go in a 350 oven for about 30 minutes and we'll check it. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed our 
4th of July recipes. We enjoyed y'all being here with us. 4th of July, it's a, it's a great holiday to celebrate your country. And we do love the, our country. And we do love Triple Pie, that's for sure. The stuff is so good. But anyways, guys, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel. If you liked our recipe, please give us a thumbs up. And y'all come back and visit with us. Y'all have a very good, safe 4th of July weekend. Celebrate with your family uh, and be safe if you're traveling somewhere especially. And eat you some good food. Goodbye, everybody. We love y'all.